I want to quickly start with um, an intro to myself. Um, for those of you that don't know, I notice I recognize some face in the room, so people will know, but Sean Anderson, I'm the CEO and founder of Hoxo Media, actually Hoxo Group, we've got a recruitment business we started this year as well. Um, but Hoxo Media is a, a marketing agency that exclusively helps the recruitment sector. And as you can see, I was, I was a recruiter for seven years before launching the business. So um, I always start when I talk to people, maybe this won't, I won't be doing this forever, but right now I still, f I get a little bit of imposter syndrome, I'll be honest with you, right? So, cause three years ago today, I was a recruiter. I was a team leader in a recruitment agency in, well, I was a manager in a recruitment agency in, in London. Um, and so there's probably people in this room that have got more marketing experience than me. But um, I think, why, why, why do you need, why should you listen to me? So we started the business in, March 2017, after quitting our jobs, me and my business partners in January of 2017, um, with a, what most people said was a ridiculous vision and like thought we were just mental um, because everyone, could, everyone was convinced we were gonna start a recruitment company. We were managing about, me and my business partner managed about three million of NFI across the whole of the, of the UK contract division of, my, of the agency I worked for. And when I said I wanna la launch an inbound marketing agency to connect marketing sales for recruitment companies globally, they just laughed at me. So. Uh, People thought I was a bit, bit weird doing this. Um, and I'll be honest, I never worked in marketing. So I never worked for an agency. I never worked for in-house marketing. I never produced a piece of content in my life. So I can't even lie and say I was this recruiter that was cool and social. I did jack all, nothing. So um, what I did was embark upon trying to grow a brand and a business in a market where I had no data, apart from a few people that I'd worked with that had gone on to work for other recruitment companies. I didn't really know anyone else in recruitment. My market was insurance that was the market I recruited for. So I had no, no data, but what I did do was back in 2017, I started investing in content daily, which some of you might remember or have seen and some of you might not, but, um, and again, I got a lot of laughs, a bit, bit uh, embarrassed at the beginning, it was a bit awkward. Um, and then two and a half years later, We've worked with clients all over the world. Um, we've won, recently won our second Global Recruiter Award with one of our recruitment agency clients. Um, I host a podcast, which is powered by Hoxo Media, which now reaches 3,500 recruiters every single month, called The RAG, which stands for the Recruitment Agency Growth Podcast, talking about stories of growth for recruitment owners. Um, we get 400,000 organic content views on our content every single month, online channels. Um, and we work with, currently today, we've got 47 recruitment agency clients all over the world. So clients in Thailand, Australia, US, UK, Central Europe. Um, we actually have a pretty much about a 90% inbound model. So when it comes to winning business and also talent for our own organization, we're at 20 staff across the Hoxhill group. I think all but three have come from inbound marketing and over 90% of our client base have come from executing the same stuff I'm about to talk to you about. So we, we practice what we preach which has generated about 1.5 million in sales for our business that's come ex completely inbound since the day we started. So hopefully that'll give you a flavor that I'm not just talking about something I wouldn't do. We actually live and breathe this every single day for both client acquisition and internal recruitment. And then we manage our recruitment agency clients to, to do the same things for both candidate and client acquisition as well. So this click is a bit slow, right? So. The current state of recruitment agency marketing, and one of the reasons why I started the business was that I felt like there was a lot that needed to change when it comes to connecting marketing with sales. And the reason being, like, often some of you in this room, whether you're in marketing or in, you're on the recruitment side of the business, you'll know that the results from a marketing perspective are very much focused on what I call bottom of the funnel. It's all about how many CVs and uh, jobs we can generate, which is, is brilliant, but it's, it's really limited to, the, to the only the people that are ready to give you something today. Um, recruitment a agencies are so eager to perform and make money that they, they forget that not everyone in their network are actually ready to give you their CV or a job today. So you kind of ignore them um, from a marketing perspective. Also, when I went out looking at the market when I was launching the business, I found that the content produced by most agencies is really, really safe. So recruiters are they're just so keen to impress and keep everyone happy in their market, but so scared to have an opinion and therefore it comes across vanilla. And I believe that if you speak to everyone, you speak to no one. So you're not actually talking to anyone individually if you're, if you're too super safe. Content across the recruitment sector is focused on what we do. So everyone's like, you know, we, we, are, we, we find the best talent. We, we, we specialize in salespeople, in SaaS, and 
we can do this, that, the other. We, we have the most bespoke, amazing process. Everyone knows what recruitment companies do. Every fucking person you're ever going to talk to knows what you do. But it's what you know and the information you hold in your agencies that actually people care about when they're not at the point of looking for a job or giving you a vacancy, right? And that's what we're talking about. Inbound is about opening the doors to engaging with people at a passive level. Also, recruiters have, I mean, me and Travis just said it then, recruiters have the most complex audience landscape of pr pretty much any in industry that I'm aware of, and I'll explain what I mean by that. But it's very difficult because even a five-man agency can have a hundred different audiences that they, they, they need to try and appeal to. So getting one marketing message to resonate is, is super, super difficult. And the big one is a lack of buy-in from the recruitment team. So I, I was the absolute nightmare top billing recruiter that honestly didn't give a shit about marketing, if I'm brutally honest with you, right? I was given a, a spreadsheet at the end of the month saying, can you ring these people? They've come via our campaigns. I didn't care. I was like, can you write a blog? No, I'm on the phone. I'll hide in the corner of the room. Like, that's still the current landscape. Most recruiters act like marketing or think that marketing just do colouring in. And uh, I'm sure you'll agree, you've heard the same, the same topics. And that's a big problem. It's a super big problem because not many industries globally have like 99% salespeople and one marketeer in the corner of the room. Like they have product, they have HR, they have operations, they have finance, they have sales, and they come together to produce something that's great. Whereas recruiters, we, we just think that anyone who's not making money is that directly colors in or is a receptionist, and, that, and that's an issue. And finally, because of all these problems I'm talking about, most recruitment agencies have, have never really invested a budget. They don't have any real systems in place for marketing um, and they don't have a clue how they're going to justify ROI other than saying how many jobs have we got and how many CVs have we got from what marketing have done. And it, and it is a bigger picture than that. So that leads me on to, so why do we need to think about a bigger presence? Why, why can't we just do what we've always done? Um, and for me, it's all about the tools that we've got available in 2019, 20, beyond are not the same as what you had when you started your recruitment company if you're five, 10 years old, and, and they won't be the same in five more years. So if you're not adopting what's there, then you, you're missing out. And recruitment's always been dominated by outbound sales activity. Like how many, how many cold BD calls can you make? Which is, is great, but there's still a need for it. And I, I would never say stop doing the things that you've always done, but there's, there's better ways to consistently engage people on a passive level whilst still doing the things you've always done. In 2019, I believe candidates and clients have got all the power. What I mean by that is they can check you out and do as much research as they want using Glassdoor, using your LinkedIn presence. They don't need a recruiter to pitch to them about anything like they did five years ago because most of the information is online. People can read it. They can read about vacancies, they can read about jobs, read about companies, read about your agency. The way we, we consume information and buy online has changed. Netflix, prime example, how many years ago Blockbuster existed? We all know that story, I'm not gonna go into it, but the reality is Uber, Netflix, all these different ways in which we engage have fundamentally changed the way we purchase and the basics in life. And, and recruitment's going down the same route. Um, I always like to tell a, a little story about when I was 17 with 20 of my mates in Manchester going on holiday to Greece, and we got dead excited about going on our first lads holiday. And we went down the high street to Thomas Cook and we, uh, we all piled into Thomas Cook, we just took over the place, right? And uh, there's this lady called Brenda who was working behind the, the screen. And at the time, we spent three hours with Brenda looking at hotels in Malia in Crete before we decided on which hotel we were going on. And I think to myself, like, that was what, 15, 16 years ago? Like, could you imagine going to the high street to meet Brenda to choose your holiday now? Like, really? It doesn't exist. And so the way that recruiters behave is changing every single day. Also, every single day on your smartphones and your desktops, industry average suggests that we're, we're getting about 10,000 links of uh, information to click on. So if you think about it, we're, we're, we're consuming information at a rate we've never done before. And we're given more opportunity now to, to read and, and invest our, our brains into different brands. So if you're not part of that, then you, you're seriously missing out if you're not offering value other than phone calls. This is a really interesting stat. So whilst we're still banging the drum to make calls, and, I, and again, I'm totally on board with that, if you actually look at the, the, the research and how it suggests, over 70% of people prefer to be contacted by brands via email. So 
whilst email marketing is dead in some instances, I don't believe it is. And people don't necessarily, the fact we can say, can I call you later and click one button on an iPhone has killed the opportunity to cold call like 90% of your audience in the last few years. So we've got to be thinking, if we're trying to appeal to an audience in 2019, 2020, we have to appeal to them in the way they want to be spoken to. And they're, they're telling us they want, to be, they want to be communicated to online, they want to be entertained, they want, to, they want to be given value, and they want to be communicated via email. They don't necessarily just want to have 50 phone, 50 phone calls a week with you. So, the final thing is, James Osborne's in the room, I heard you say 42 agencies, 1,000 agencies before, God knows how many agencies are in the UK right now, but last year, the SIA said there was 28,000 VAT registered agencies, so you could probably add another 10,000 that weren't uh, putting their VAT registration on. There's nine and a half thousand recruitment companies in London last year, which is more than the next hundred cities in the UK combined. I've got, I don't know the exact numbers of, of the US and global, but that's a 59% increase in recruitment agencies in the six years between 2012 and 2018. So it's genuinely never been bigger, never been a bigger market and, and a harder fight to get the attention. And if you're just limited to the way you operated before, you're gonna be missing out on, on a major trick as you move forward. So that leads me on to inbound marketing. What is this term that I'm banging on about online? You may have heard from various uh, different organizations. Well, HubSpot patented the word inbound marketing, so I'll take their, their definition, which is it's a process of using multiple different things within marketing to effectively attract leads through each journey of the buying cycle. So it's about thinking about people and customers, candidates and clients as human beings and trying to engage them at a level where they are in their own journey, not just based on what you want from those people. So if they're not looking for a job, that doesn't mean you can't engage with them. If they're not gonna give you a vacancy because they're not hiring right now, that doesn't mean in three months they might not be. And it's how do we start to attract people based on where they are, not where we want them to be just because we've got their targets to hit. And the most simple way I call, I, I do it for recruitment businesses, think about it as eyeball to phone call. All right, how do you run campaigns or put, put content out that you can prove that however many people saw it, and that led to a certain amount of people being eventually on the phone, because that is where we still need recruiters to behave, it's just how we get to the phone that changes. I still believe recruitment is, a, is always gonna be a phone and a face-to-face -face based business, but can we prove that that content from an inbound perspective actually generates phone calls for the sales team, for the, whether it's candidates or clients? ultimately turning your reach and awareness into leads that your team can pick up. So I'm gonna talk you through some practical ways in which you can do it and some steps that you can put into your agency to actually make it happen. And it's not as complicated as you'd think. So, how does it work? Well, it starts with your audience in mind. Let's get some more. So when I say audience, this one is probably the biggest challenge and, most, and the biggest misconception in the industry. What's an audience? Whenever I ask this, I was at the TRM with James in the summer and I, I asked the group, there's about 25 mar marketing and, and recruitment I was in the room, I said, how many audiences have you got? And I, try and think about that now as a, as a recruitment business leader. Most people say candidates, clients, talent to work for me. Break it down into three, all right? And that is a really simplistic version. The definition of a target audience is a demographic of people that are most likely to be interested in your products or service. And to drive inbound results, each audience ideally needs to be communicated in a very unique way. So if you break it down into three camps, well, it's, it's very difficult to do that unless you've got a super, super niche um, business in each area. So how many audiences do you actually have is a, is a question and, a t and an activity I would ask all of you to go away and do. And think about when you're trying to drive inbound or if you're gonna try to drive inbound, how many different types of people could we speak to in an ideal world? I'm gonna show you a case study. So this is a recruitment business of about 20 staff. They've got um, a small satellite office in, in Central Europe and, and a headquartered in London. And they said to us when we met, they've got three audiences, right? So what we did was, before we even got under the bonnet of the detail around the different recruitment divisions they've got, we, we broke it down into this. We were like, okay, so you've got contract and perm, and you've got careers, you've got Central Europe, UK. So if we look at, you've got your existing clients, your new clients, your existing candidates, your new candidates, in both sides, plus the two types of people they hire, which was recruiters and trainees, at the most simplistic level, you've got 22 different content strategies because they're all different. They're actually all different. But then if you take existing or new candidates, you might have 10 different job titles in there. 
And what appeals to a development manager might not appeal to a, a software tester or whatever, I'm making that up, but do you get where I'm going with this? Like, it's actually really, really complex. And that's probably the biggest challenge we have in, in recruitment marketing is not only defining how many we've got, but then choosing where do we start? Which one's most important? Um, so my biggest tip that I say to every recruitment company, if you're one man band or you're 100, 200 staff, pick one audience first and focus on it for a campaign. All right, it, you've got no chance of delivering a message that's gonna to appeal to every single candidate and client that you could recruit for. It's just not gonna happen. So what you think about is, right, what, if, if you think about the business strategy, which if we could get an inbound stream of a certain type of person that are coming to us as an organization, what would benefit us the most? Would it be niche candidates in a certain space? Would it be potential hiring managers or HR contacts? It doesn't really matter. Point being, pick one and at least for three to four months, think about investing some time in thinking about them as individuals and driving them towards your agency because you can't do them all at once unless you invest a hell of a lot of time and money, which most people wouldn't. So next, once you know, right, we're gonna go for HR, what do we do? We need to create what we call a buying persona, um, which again is a terminology that in most organizations they're probably familiar with. Some of you might be in the room, but most recruitment organizations I talk to, when I use the phrase persona or customer profile, they've never done it. So effectively, I won't go into too much detail, but a buyer persona is, is it formulates the, the basis of any content you're gonna produce in an inbound campaign. So um, effectively, it's about understanding the, the nuances and the challenges of those people. So truly understanding your customer leads to them engaging with the content. So the fact that we've got 400,000 views a month is because we talk to recruitment owners about information we know they care about. If we just spoke to any business owner, we might struggle because we don't necessarily know the challenges for every business owner. So it, the more specific you can be, the better. Um, if you look at this, so this is a very basic example of what a buyer persona would look like. You give it a semi-fictional representation, a name. Um, you can think about their role, their style, their demographics, their age, the, the platforms they hang out on. So if you know they're on LinkedIn every day, then you don't need to put a Facebook strategy together. Likewise, if you're dealing with, I don't know, people at, um, I don't know, construction workers who wouldn't even have a LinkedIn account, then you need to think about the other platforms. And the pain points, this is a massive part of, most people engage with content based on ambition or pain. They're either struggling with something or they're trying to reach something. And if you can offer value based on what you know, then you will get them engaged with that. And I think this would be really useful for you guys as well. So if you've never done a persona before, this is a free tool, it takes 30 seconds, you fill it in online, um, and it will literally spit out the persona for you with the diagrams and the graphs and everything like that. So I believe you're getting the slides after this anyway, but you can just type make my persona in Google and it will come up for you, all right? Um, so once you know who you're after and you've defined as a team their problems, their challenges, the issues they're facing, who they are as individuals, the next thing is we have to go with a value first content plan. So going out saying we can find you talent or we can get you a job is not necessarily a value first content plan unless they're looking for a talent or a job. So we have to go a little bit higher up. So it's about creating assets that are designed to capture their attention and pull them to get towards you like a magnet. And we call this pillar content, and ultimately, the aim is to get someone to download that information. So what you're doing is you're taking someone that was previously a statistic, a view, a number, a traffic on your website, and you're getting them to give you their email, their number, their job title, their company, whatever, in return for the value. And I'll show you some examples of, of valuable content that we've done, but it really has to be something that is, is detailed enough that they're prepared to give you their contact details. If you think about every time you go in a coffee shop and you fill your email in to get the, the Wi-Fi, they're not doing that because they, you need to give their email for the Wi-Fi so that you can join the marketing list and they can think about remarketing. So it's a similar concept, but at a value level. Now again, I keep saying this, focus your content on what your agency knows, not what your agency does. So um, I think it was Finley James actually, John, John's in the room. Um, and I was speaking to your new CCO, Andrew McCaskill, who was telling me about a campaign you guys ran where you, they, they sent a job spec template to 500 hiring manager contacts in their CRM and got 80 odd downloads, 80 odd people came through who clicked through to get that template, which says, one, they, either, they haven't got a clue how to write a job spec, 
or two, they're, they're going to be hiring at some point soon, right? You've not rang them up and tried to have a really kind of cheesy conversation about their, their hiring needs or the, the football or their holiday. You've sent out an email which says, look, we're thinking of you and we wrote this, hopefully you'll get some value. And that is a really simple sort of example. You can go a lot more complex, but that's something you guys know and do more often than some of your clients, especially the startup community. So, pillar content can be in lots of different forms. We've all seen white papers. Um, we've all seen, the, this is a big one I like, templates. So the way Finley did it, we put together a Google slide template for recruitment companies not long ago, which was all about inbound. And it was literally something that they could copy and, and change and reword the, sorry, redesign it, color schemes, put their own logo on it. And in five minutes, they've got something that took us months <coughs> in their business. So if you can give templates to your industry, even very simple stuff, you'd be surprised how many people engage with it. Ebooks, how to guides, um, surveys, salary surveys, obviously, really, really, really well. Um, but it's about how you use the information. Um, the next thing is how do you get that information in front of the right people? So, of course, um, we can talk about the email distribution of this people you've already got in Bullhorn or whatever system you guys are using. But one way we get some amazing results for clients, and we're seeing more and more, is through the paid social channels. So, Put your hand up if LinkedIn have contacted you about their campaign manager in the last six months or a year. Most of the room, right? So there's a reason for that. And because right now, paying to put your valuable content on the news feeds of the, exactly the right people is never be, it's never been cheaper and will never be cheaper than it is today. You can literally hyper-target HR directors in London in pharmaceuticals and hit them with something that's so specific. Like it's, it's really, really a cost-effective way of getting in front of the exact right people. The next thing is, if you've got recruiters that are building LinkedIn profiles as part of their job and connections, then organically, you should have a decent reach. Like if you think about the average recruiter might have 2,000 contacts, you've got 10 recruiters in a, in a division, in a similar space, that's 20,000 organic views you could get just by getting them to share whatever you produce, which costs literally nothing to do it. And then also the data you have in your CRM is massive. Recruiters are the most data rich organizations we've probably ever lived. And the amount of meaningful and regular engagement we have with the data in our CRMs is so low. So rather than again, sending out, are you looking for a job, hoping that they'll bounce if they're not accurate or they'll come back with a CV, why not start sending out valuable content as well and seeing, tracking who, who bites back. Finally, once leads and people do bite back, this is the bit that we find makes a big difference. How do you get people to actually engage with it uh, from a recruiter perspective? And the first thing is putting together what we call a sales enablement plan, which is getting the recruiters to then liaise with... So the, the biggest problem in recruitment marketing is when a marketeer is the one qualifying those leads to give that spreadsheet at the end of the month. Because they haven't got a clue in most instances whether someone's right or not. So if you can get the qualification process when someone bites back to be done in real time by a recruiter, which is what we do, it, it creates a big difference. When the recruiter then looks to reach back out to those leads to find out why they were looking for a job spec template or whatever, um, firstly, we'd want that to be tracked in a CRM. So I know Bullhorn has lots and lots of providers like Herefish and um, there's other solutions that can track and natively integrate. Um, but you, you don't want this to be in a spreadsheet because it's just not scalable. It's not, it's not a modern tool that you can use. Um, you want to then think about providing some extra content for the sales team. So if someone engages with the first piece of content, that doesn't necessarily mean that that's all they're going to read because quite often the people won't answer the phone if you phone them straight up. So could you lead with a secondary piece of content? So if they liked a job spec template, could you give them a, an advert template or something, a blog that your CEO wrote about the, the changing dynamics of how people apply, whatever. The fact is, if they're engaging with some content first, then we want to be able to give them more content in the next piece of the journey at a recruiter level, not necessarily coming from the brand. And then first, the next thing is, is about lead management. So if you're doing this by just literally spreadsheets and checking your Google Calendar, you're going to miss out and follow-up won't, uh, won't be managed very well. So I would think about investing in a marketing automation lead management tool that can increase efficiency and can ensure that as soon as people bite on a campaign, they're automatically enrolled in automated sequences or workflows. And again, there's so many systems out there that can do that. And 
if you come up to me and ask me anything afterwards, I can, I can help you out with that as well. Um, but effectively, making sure it's an efficient process. Um, this then allows your recruitment team to focus on reaching out to leads that can be contacted with context. So if someone knows that you've, the, the, the candidate has downloaded something, it's, it's a different level of conversation. It's got context to it. It's not just a, I saw you on LinkedIn, you look like you're in the right type of role or company, can we have a chat? It's got context. And, and effectively, it's driving warm chats, warm conversations, which is what Inbound's all about. We should, we, we should never in 2019 be having cold conversations when there's so many tools to warm them up. And this is a really good way of doing it. How do we accurately measure return on investment? Every recruitment owner I've ever spoke to, when it comes to marketing, the first question is ROI. It's all they care about. And it makes sense, okay? But you can't put an exact financial ROI like you can on a recruiter on everything within marketing. It's, it's just not the same process. It's, it's like, it's like a, uh, an accountant. The way you pay an accountant is very different than the way you pay a recruiter. And you can't put every single part of your business into the same camp. So measuring ROI needs to be relevant to the activities that your marketing campaign is actually uh, taking part with. And the first thing is knowing the, the measurements that you want to track. So views and reach are actually really, really super important. So the amount of people that are like, oh, it doesn't matter, it's only views. What does that mean? Oh, I look at it like, if for, for me now in this room, what are there, 100 people maybe, 60, 70 people? That, that you're all individuals with businesses and job titles and, and potential buying journeys. And there's, everyone sees value in this, but actually an average post on LinkedIn from anyone in your business could probably generate a thousand views in, in a day nowadays with the organic reach. Could get up to 50,000 views if you pay for it. That's real people. We're not talking about a view as a statistic. They're individuals. They're, they're real people. And they lead to, to, to business. So the first thing is start to measure the reach of, of the, the content you're putting out. How many views on LinkedIn, on other social platforms are you getting? And does it start to increase as you offer value? And stop talking about jobs. Just stop talking about hot job, get in touch. Um, the next thing is then traffic. So where are you actually sending these people? Are you sending them to your website? Are you sending them to a lead advert? Are you sending them anywhere? But if you are sending them somewhere, we want to then see how the traffic spikes as a result of the views. So if you're getting a thousand views on something online with a link to go to your website, that should drive an increase in traffic. And you want to be measuring that. Uh, the next thing, obviously, we talked about pillar content having a, uh, a call to action, which is typically someone giving their contact details, their email. So we want to know about the, the click-through rates. So We've got people that go from reach to traffic, then they click through on the information, and then finally conversion. So how many actually give their contact details over? And these, these can vary so much based on the quality of the imagery, the wording, the video that you use, whatever. But the point is, if you're not measuring it, you don't know how to improve it. Um, finally then, once they're into your CRM, it's all about how do we engage contacts? So how many people are opening emails? And finally, a big one is how many people are we actually getting on the phone to? I measure it, so that eyeball to phone call is massive. If I can generate a campaign that gets 10,000 views, I'm then thinking how many of those people am I gonna end up getting on the phone to? And it'll be the right ones that engage that I'll get on the phone to. But if you can measure that all the way through, there's your ROI right there. This campaign generated 35 calls with new people that we did not have to just randomly call from LinkedIn that has now led to meetings and vacancies or just opening doors to, to future business on a passive level. The next thing is all about systems. It's, again, there's ways in which with Bullhorn specifically, you can manage campaigns so that it, it literally tracks from the amount of content reach we've achieved all the way through to phone calls. So whilst depending on your infrastructure, that could be really quite disparate right now, you should be thinking about how you can invest in tools that can allow you to see it all in one place because the more efficient you get with your systems the quicker you can report on what you're doing and the faster you can make business critical decisions on whether that went really well we do it again or well, that was awful and we'll do something different next time all right so this sounds great 
No one has ever said to me when I've pitched inbound marketing or told them about it, that it sounds awful, right? No one has ever done that. If they ever do, it'll be a, a shock. But the first thing then they wanna know is how fast does it work? Because remember, I'm talking about two and a half years of investing every single day, and my hair wasn't gray when I started, right? So it's, it definitely knackers you out a little bit. No, I'm joking, but how fast can you get results? Seriously, how fast? So whilst success doesn't happen overnight, building a brand, that's a great tune, by the way. That's awesome, that. I was listening to that in 2011, I think. Um, <laughs> so success doesn't happen overnight. If you think about a recruiter starting in your business, right? I would always, because I come from the background of a recruiter, not a marketeer, I always bring it back to what I know better. And I think if I start someone in my agency, I already know the spike that I'm expecting of them getting on the phone, speaking to candidates, pulling leads, not doing very much with them, sending shite CVs, sending better CVs, and eventually being product productive and profitable. And so the brand and the way you manage your marketing has to be similar. You have to invest in it. You have to think it's going to take time. It's not an overnight quick fix. You can't just turn something on and you blow up the internet. But there are ways in which you can manage the process to get quick wins that are uh, measurable and keep you excited along the way. And HubSpot always say that companies across industry, if they automate their lead management, where they use tools to manage the way that they engage with people coming through, you're looking at an increase in revenue within six to nine months of about 10%. Um, I, we've got so solutions with clients and we've seen clients like what Finley James did, but they get results within three to four months. Again, six to nine months, nine to 12 months, 12 to 18 months, results get bigger and bigger and bigger to the point where it's a completely different story than what you're talking about at the beginning. But it is about having some patience. And that's honestly why Martin's never really stuck in a recruitment company because the patients, they've got bored and turned it off when it's not, not made so much money in the first three, six months. So what skills do you need? And the reason I say skills and not people is because there's quite a lot involved and you're not necessarily gonna to wanna to hire all these different people. So it's about thinking, do you have skills internally or externally and how many different people do you need? So I can't give you an exact project team because some of you might have these skills actually sat in your recruitment teams and all sorts. But to run an effective inbound campaign, you need firstly someone who's gonna coordinate it. This is not gonna be the right person to give it your ops manager, office manager, finance manager, receptionist, the crap recruiter who's just awful. Like, don't do it. Like, get someone who's actually gonna organize it. Um, someone who's an account, your marketing manager typically would be the right person. And then you've got to think about the following. So you've got your copywriting to make sure that your tone of voice is good, the quality of the content is actually good. Um, and as, prof as professional as you can get with that, I would always advise. Um, design, obviously 10,000 links a day. You've got to be eye-catching, things have to look sharp, they have to be on brand, so um, you don't necessarily need, want to be doing things always on Canva and these basic tools. You want to be investing in brand guidelines. Paid media. So why I've got a good relationship with LinkedIn, but also a, an interesting relationship with LinkedIn is because they sell their talent insights and their, um, especially the campaign manager um, as being a platform where you can just click in it and you can set up your, your stuff and go and you press a button and two weeks later you've got loads of leads. The reality is it's an actual job. Like it's paid media is a skill set that people are paid thousands, hundreds of thousands to do. So getting invested in someone and there's plenty of people online that can help you and plenty of people in, in the market. Someone who can actually run an ad campaign, if you're gonna spend the money, I'd invest in getting someone who can do it and not just someone who's just testing for the first time because you will just spend your money and, and lose it. Um, and then videography. Um, I am actually a believer that iPhone quality is amazing and you can do so much in-house nowadays. Whilst we've got JJ on video over there with a camera, it's actually not that important. So I would, I would depending on the campaign, you can, most people have got some pretty high quality camera equipment in, in the office. Uh, and the budget you need to execute on a marketing campaign. So again, on a, on a good inbound marketing campaign, it's difficult to give you an exact budget based on, are you gonna invest in talent internally? Are you gonna use an agency? Are you gonna find a consultant? There's various different levels you can invest. But I would say, just consider the following costs, right? So you've got the salaries of, of the people potentially internally, if you've got a marketeer, or um, the outsource costs of an agency or freelancer. You're gonna need an, a budget to spend on LinkedIn, so you don't just get the leads without putting money in. And we would always advise that you wanna be spending no less than a thousand pounds a month on, on social platforms to get returns right now. This might change soon, but a thousand pound a month, a minimum three month return on a campaign 
is, is a, so you're looking at a three thousand pound budget and then software you want again look at bullhorn make sure it does what it, uh, there's plenty of other like here fish etc there's lots of software but that's going to be an additional cost if you really want to start engaging people at a passive and an inbound way and reversing that consistent outbound methodology these are the things you've actually got to do and consider even if you're a small we, we work with businesses that are one-man bands so there's no agency that in 2019 and beyond can't afford to do this um, it's just whether you choose it as a priority and then finally I want to show you a bit of a case study so I don't know if they're, they're in the room big bullhorn user Harrington Star fintech recruitment company um, we were given the brief um, about 12 months ago right that they wanted to attract experienced recruiters across London and New York they were about 30 odd staff at the time wanted to get to about 70 across their, their, their two offices and to be really frank, they were saying they were losing out on talent um, based on the fact that how they looked online. They weren't, they weren't appealing, they weren't sexy, they, especially experienced people. They, they've, they've got enough about them to be able to choose where they want to work and they do a lot of reading. So the, the first thing we did was after a bit of a brand refresh. But then it was about how do we get them to come to us? And of course we can spend with Rectorex and we can give out great referral fees for our talent internally. To, to, and that works and, and they did get some great results. But they were like, how can we do what you're talking about inbound to attract these people and get them to come to us rather than... Because if you actually sat there and looked at recruiters, London, New York, with a few years' experience, it's a bit of a minefield. Like DMing all of them would take you a while. You'd, you'd literally be bored senseless, right? So what we did is we thought about the persona. We mapped that persona I just showed you before. And we came up with a, th a recruiter about three to five years typically falls into one of two camps if they're thinking about development and that is they're a biller or they've been a biller and they're wanting to get into management they want to they want to go up that chain or they're being talked about going into management maybe even pushed into management and they're not sure it's for them that was me i was i did 700 grand in my third year in contract in london and my boss was like let's get you a team and at the time i was like you're doing it for you not for me i actually was really happy about it in the end but the reality is there's loads of people that don't know whether and they hear these horror stories about recruiters aren't necessarily good managers. So what we did was we put together this guide to helping recruiters ask themselves certain questions to decide whether that was, whether which route was for them. Really simple, I think it's about a nine page document and uh, it, it should at the end of it give you some context to say that sounds more like me or that sounds more like me. Simple concept, right? So the campaign, we actually pushed it for over six months because it was performing so well. Uh, we, we ended up putting, to go live with it, we did some social posts, so we did, there was about 60 different social pieces of content that went out on organically that would link to this piece, to this downloadable form. Um, some of them were images, some of them were mini videos, but a lot of them were just statuses and comments that were taken as little sections of the bigger piece. Um, we put an ad budget behind LinkedIn, Facebook and Instagram, um, and we actually, Instagram was, was amazing in the end. Um, and we got a reach of over 85,000 views on that content over that period. Um, finally, what they invested totally was about 30,000 pounds over six months. So some people would be like, that's pretty expensive. Um, but what actually happened was they got three and, uh, just over 350 people came through. That was people that downloaded the content. They didn't say they wanted to work for Harrington Star. They said, I'm interested in billing management conversation. That led to Lots and lots of emails and integrated automated messaging. 25 interviews that, that ended up happening in both locations. Um, they doubled their headcount that year, but based on that exact campaign, they hired three people that were, three of them were based in the US and they had previously combined billings of over 2 million quid, or $2 million, sorry. So they were all billers that didn't want to be managers effectively. And one of them came. So what happens when we, when we run campaigns or when you run campaigns on LinkedIn, if people hit your website, that gives you an opportunity to retarget them on other platforms. So one of the guys actually, although he'd come via LinkedIn, he just said he could not stop seeing the brand on, on Instagram. His Instagram stories were just peppered with this biller and manager, biller and manager, biller and manager. He was sick of it and he ended up downloading it. And that was what, what the how the introduction came. So that's one example of lots and lots that we could talk about. But the fact is, the potential returns are up, like based on these guys' billings before is, is over two million, based on the thirty thousand investment, which I think most recruitment owners would say is, a, is an amazing ROI. But it's about it's, there's lots that goes into it, and, and effectively it's about believing in the fact that times are changing, 
people are wanting more than just knowing you're hiring, um, whether that's candidates internally, externally, or clients. But we've got to think about the individuals we want to talk to as people first, and then what we can do for them second. I think that's it. Yeah, I think that's the end of my talk. Bye.